So two men now that have helped us and brought this county over the last couple of years from something small to an All-Ireland final. The two of them have put on a massive effort to Rory Gallagher for his help, his football and knowledge. A fantastic addition to Donegal and Donegal football. Rory, from each one of the players here and from people Donegal, I'd like to thank you very, very much. Because Jim McGuinness, where do we start? From every man, woman in Donegal, both players and people alike, I owe him a massive debt of gratitude. The man's worth ethic is just absolutely, it's indescribable. His passion for Donegal football throughout the last two years and over his playing career is another thing that's indescribable. And again, a massive debt of thanks towards Jim from the players and also from the people of Donegal. Thanks a million, Jim. Finally, a massive thanks to you, the fans, and everybody in Donegal. <laughs> Donegal has always been a, a massive footballing, as how would you say, it? everybody craves success in it. Unfortunately, over the last maybe a number of years, since 92, we haven't been able to deliver the success as a group of footballers. But here today, before we go out onto the pits, we are always thought that we're representing the people of Donegal and we're representing the crest of Donegal. Thanks a million. <laughs> One last thing. Jimmy's winning matches. Jimmy's winning games. Jimmy's bringing Sammy back to Donegal. We found our singer for the Eurovision. Yeah, Donny Gold's day. They won by four points in the end. Even though Mayo created more scoring chances, 27 to 22. Both teams had 13 scores during the final today. Interesting scores from play. Donny Gold got uh, some 2-5 from play. Mayo got seven points from play. But they have conceded the trophy to Donny Gold as. The players now share in the glory of the afternoon by lifting that trophy. And Jim is there with his family, his wife Yvonne, and the three children down there to share in the glory. There's Paddy McBrearty, the youngest player to play in the final. And the two brothers were involved, Neil McGee and his brother Raymond. There's Neil Gallagher, the big midfielder. And there's Mark McHugh, maybe a candidate for young player of the year, I would imagine. Ryan Bradley and Frank McGlynn mark him down as an all-star, no question about it. There'll be many of them, I'm sure, on that very gold team. Adrian Handlin there, one of the substitutes who didn't get in today. He did. Rory Kavanagh. And your commentators on today's All-Ireland Football Final were Ger Canning and Martin Carney. Well, it all went a little bit quiet uh, for a while during that speech, but as you can see, the celebrations are beginning to ratchet up again here at Croke Park, and no doubt the celebrations here at Croke Park are only the beginning of the mothers of all celebrations you're going to see in Donegal tomorrow when the Sam Maguire Cup heads northwest. Joe Barley, Pat Splann and Colin Rook are here with me in studio, and I'm sure 
uh, the three lads like myself in congratulating Johnny Gall should also say uh, and certainly on my own behalf on behalf of other neighbours in Connacht commiserations to Mayo uh, another unfortunate day for them but Joe Brawley it is Johnny Gall's day and deservedly so uh, well a brilliant conception by Jim McGuinness and you know it's true that Jimmy is winning matches it is true you know the after they'd got the seven point lead it was inevitable really it's not possible against Johnny Gall to break down that blanket defence and in the second half they just did what they normally do, they nicked scores here and there. Mayo played very well. Mayo's setup was perfect. They shepherded Donegal into cul-de-sacs. They did everything they could do, but they simply couldn't break down the defence as the game wore on. And you also have to have you also have to have some special players. And in Michael Murphy, we saw him as a boy wonder. And today he has matured into the great player that we knew that he was. I mean his influence in the game was enormous. He scored one four. Each of them was a brilliant score goal in the first half was the catalyst in the second half when Donegal were under pressure he kicked he, he kicked two brilliant frees fisted that ball over the bar and you need some special players but overall I mean I just think that the game the, the, the outcome was inevitable after the first quarter but you would have to say that Mayo deserve great credit for the way they set up today. That's for land. Well congratulations to Donegal. Uh, deserving champions Great champions, absolutely fantastic. It will, it's a fabulous occasion. I mean, just mm, mm. You, it makes you proud to be a member of the GA. The whole occasion, the atmosphere, the camaraderie, you know, the way the players now can celebrate on the field the play. It was just brilliant. It was an enjoyable game, it was an interesting game, absorbing, enthralling. Very, very enjoyable. And credit to Mayo for making a game of it. Absolutely, they, I, you, my heart goes out for them. They deserve an All-Ireland. Unfortunately, there's no All-Ireland title handed out for sympathy, whatever. But they made a game of it. This was, like I said, a different bunch of Mayo players who dug deep when they were seven points down and were into it up to the last five minutes. So, well done to both teams and well done to Donegal. Great champions. And Colin Rook. Well, it would be very ungenerous not to congratulate Donegal, considering that we were heavy, heavily critical of them last year. And it's a proper All-Ireland in so far to beat in Tyrone, Cork, yes. Kerry and Mayo to win it. And I think they stumbled over the line a bit. I think the whole favouritism weighed a bit heavily on their shoulders and they didn't play as well as any other of the big no. games this year. But yet, what does it matter when you win in All-Ireland? I suppose, as Joe said, it was almost inevitable after the two goals went in. And Mayo are everybody's sort of favourite team. But they fought very, very bravely today. It was a great display from them for the last 60 minutes of the game. And it's just unfortunate that they give away the two goals. But Donegal have been the team of the year and the Sam Maguire is going where it belongs. The thing about them is this, Colby. I, mean, I, I disagree with what you said because Donegal never plays champion football. They don't cut you to pieces. As we saw very clearly again today. As soon as Donegal got that fifth point from Michael Murphy, he was backing back into the midfield area and they just set up their defensive phalanx. The thing about them is, against Kerry, they beat Kerry by two points. Cork, they beat by two points. They could have won this game by a lot more today, but again, they were content to win it by three or four points. This is simply the nature of the system that they've chosen. And the virtue, the great virtue that it has, is that those boys stick to that through yeah, thick or thin. It's unquestioning. Everyone's got, they've just got a plan A, they've got nothing else. And they're simply grinding teams down. But it, it goes back to what I said before the game, that in terms of evolution, the Donegal system of play is one year more advanced they're than the Mayo. They're just getting a bit better at it. They're, they're, well, they're very well organised. And what Mayo, they're very well organised defensively. And bear in mind, like, like the lad said today, today was the first day that they really had to dig deep at times. That, have, that they, you know, they met fire with fire. But what Mayo didn't have, Mayo didn't have the pace or the guile or the cunning to, get, to break down that Donegal defence. And secondly, when they handed Mayo's defence, Mayo's defenders fouled seven times and handed seven points. But look, the bottom line is, 2-1 to no score after 11 minutes and you know God that well. I, I, Donegal I, I, weren't going to lose a seven point I, lead. I don't, I don't buy into this that this is a revolution in Gaelic football. No. It's a slight step more advanced than what we had from Tyrone seven or eight years ah, ago. Come on, Except that Tyrone maybe had better individual forwards at that time. Maybe Donegal have moved it on to, to a greater level in terms of intensity and short passing. But that System. type of game has been there. It that's, actually that's, was that's completely it, wrong, it is actually invented by Tyrone about five or six years ago and has been polished up a bit by you, Donegal. You, you, and in the meantime, lads, I think the only thing that's going to persuade these uh, Donegal supporters to actually leave Croke Park this evening is they'll want to get home before the team uh, arrives back tomorrow night. Okay, much more analysis.
and reaction to come. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this short break. Donegal are the All-Ireland Football Champions of 2012 after defeating uh, Mayo on a scoreline of two goals and 11 points to 13 points. Well, obviously, it's been a big day for Donegal here at Croke Park today. It's been a big day also, by the way, I have to mention for somebody else here at Croke Park, and that is our floor manager, Tom Flanagan, who is here uh, beside the camera. And Tom is having his last day in Croke Park. Happy retirement, Tom. Thank you for all of your help and your good humour down through the